This podcast is brought to you by HEC Paris. The Birth of the European Journal of Risk Regulation by Alberto Alemano. As the founder and editor of this new journal, I would like to spend a few words on the reasons that lie behind this venture. Why a new journal devoted to the law and policy of European risk regulation? The first and most obvious reason is the following. Although most Europeans don't seem fully aware of it, the European Union governs most aspects of modern life and touches every single individual in some way. Literally, working, traveling, communicating, eating, drinking and even breathing are all activities largely governed by the European Union. Every aspect of daily life bears the imprint of EU regulatory action. Although empirical data are controversial, it seems that more than 60% of French, Italian, German and national legislations currently into force are no longer decided in their respective capitals, but they are made in Brussels. If this is European law, it is safe to argue that at least half of this consists of risk regulations. This is regulations aim at the protection of public health, safety and the environment. This mere quantitative observation might be enough to justify the launch of a new scientific journal aimed at following these developments. Yet, as we will see together, there are many more reasons that come in support of this venture. Where does risk regulation come from? Which are the drivers behind its emergence? The completion of the single market, consumer demand, triggered by the safety scares of the 90s starting from the BSC scandal and going through the dioxin crisis, first the Perrier, then in the chicken. And then the fall of the Santer Commission back in 1999, the institutional changes, the single European Act, and finally the enlargement process. Having said that, here is my argument for the creation of a new journal. Risk regulations is not only big, but is also unique. It is indeed fortuitous to the extent the founding fathers would have hardly foreseen it. It is embedded as it is a condition sine qua non for the functioning of the internal market. It is necessary as is one of the European aims is the well-being of its people. And it is complex as it relies not only on dozens of specialized agencies but involves also a very diverse group of stakeholders. But risk regulation in Europe is also contentious as it's still looking for an underlying philosophy. It is a shared responsibility between the European Union and the member states and is actually shared twice as the European competence is shared between the agencies and the Commission. It is ongoing as it is a working in progress and uh, it is global as recently illustrated by the Chinese contaminating milk with melamin. Finally, we like to see risk regulation as an opportunity. An opportunity to gain credibility and also popularity among European citizens. This is because risk regulation is a collective rather than an individualistic approach to health and safety. Regulations, not only curative medicines and doctors, may reduce risks and save lives. That's exactly where our new journal would like to step in to capture a reality, to create a platform for scholarly and informed discussions on why, how and by whom new and old risks are regulated today. A platform where virtually all risk regulation players, starting from the agencies, the industry, the policy makers and the consumers at large may interact 
and exchange information and ideas. In this way, the journal will build bridges among epistemic communities, such as those of policymakers, regulatory scientists, and national officials, and also bridges across disciplines that usually don't talk to each other, such as risk analysis, political science, sociology, economics, cognitive psychology, and, and the law. And bridges across sub-disciplines, too. European law, regulation, and governance studies. And ideally, all these new ideas will produce synergies around the journal. Having said that, I cannot but wish you a very happy reading. Please visit us at www.agc.edu.